Hello, dear students. Welcome you all to the Master Nursing Classes. Myself, Mr. Nagraj, working as Nursing Officer at AIMS, and your Narset Mentor and Guide here in front of you all today to discuss one more gold standard topic for our Narset exam, that is Myasthenia Graves. Yes, students, in the last previous video, we have discussed each and every point that is on the Parkinsonism disease. We have seen all the clinical manifestations very important nursing interventions that may come in the practical form or the clinical based or the scenario based question. Students, here in this particular video, I am discussing the same as, as in each and every point on the myasthenia graves. Okay. If you have didn't seen the last previous video on the Parkinsonism, you are missing one gold standard class students. So please do watch the myasthenia graves class after watching this session. Okay. It is very much helpful. If you are seeing the entire video means definitely, definitely one going, one question is going to come in your exams and what are the components, what are the concept and the, what are the topic I am covering, examiner is going to focus on that only because I am covering the entire topic and the very important one and the five star questions. So let me discuss in detail on the myasthenia graves students. So without wasting this time, we will start the class. Yes. Our first question is like this. Myasthenia gravis occurs due to the damage to which of the following receptor. So we are having the receptors here. In Kathira question only, Myasthenia gravis disease, how receptor damage in the Akthi and Kathira. What is asking the question? The examiner is asking, in the disease of the Myasthenia gravis, which receptor is damaging? Students, we are having the cholinergic receptors and anticholinergic receptors. We will discuss on that particular here session. So it is very helpful for you all. Okay. So, let me read the options. Option A is like this. Option A is, yes, the muscarinic receptor. Option B is the nicotinic receptor. Option C is like the, yes, the alpha receptor. And option D is the beta receptor. Students, like this. Okay. Let me discuss and let me clear your concept. And answer will come automatically in your mind only. Okay. Yes. What happens in the myasthenia graphs? Let me stay first. So myasthenia gravis is a disorder of the neuromuscular junction. Okay, this is a this is of the neuro and muscular junction. When there is junction between one nerve and one muscle, at the area of the junction, at the area where the muscle and nerve meets together, at that point of the time, some receptors are damaging, and very importantly, one beautiful acetylcholine neurotransmitters decreasing up. Due to the deficiency of the decreased acetylcholine, or else autoantibodies which are forming in our body, which are damaging the our receptors, which leads to the yes, the very important our beautiful topic that is myasthenia gravis. Okay, students, let me explain by drawing the structure. That is very helpful for you to remember. Okay, so let me draw a structure. Consider this is an yes, this is an neuron end end part of the neuron that is the nerve terminal, and this is our beautiful. Mother, okay. So the junction, the junction between the yes, the junction between the this nerve and this muscle we call that is a neuromuscular junction. Okay, neuromuscular junction, very important. Okay, so from here, from the end of the neuron part, there is small small vesicles. Inside these vesicles, neurotransmitters are present. Inside these vesicles, neurotransmitters are present. So, in the parasympathetic nerve system, the very important neurotransmitter of the parasympathetic nerve system is the acetylcholine. So, we in the short simple, we say that is an ACH. Acetylcholine is ACH. Okay, very important. So, this neurotransmitter, when it releases in the, yes, the synapse. Okay, here is the, on the muscles, we are having the beautiful, yes, the cholinergic receptors. Okay, beautiful cholinergic receptors. In the cholinergic receptor, we have the muscarinic receptor and nicotinic receptor. But, but in the neuromuscular junction, yes, in the neuromuscular junction, we are having the nicotinic receptor. Students, not in muscarinic receptor. Muscarinic receptors present in the GI system, in the central nervous system, and in the, yes, the, our eye and our salivary gland. I will explain that one. Wait, wait for explanation. Okay. So, which receptors are present here? Yes, here our nicotinic receptors. Okay, nicotinic receptors. So, what happens in myasthenia gravis? Myasthenia gravis, two things occurs very importantly. One, one thing is that is deficiency of the acetylcholine. 
ಯಾವಾಗ ಅಸ್ಟಲ್ ಕೊಲಿನ್ ಡೆಫಿಸಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ವೆನ್ ದ ಅಸ್ಟಲ್ ಕೊಲಿನ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಡೆಫಿಸಿಟ್ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಸೊ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಸ್ಟಿಮ್ಯುಲೇಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಮಜಲ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಸ್ಟಿಮ್ಯುಲೇಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಮಜಲ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಮಜಲ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಯಸ್ ದ ಮಜಲ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ವೀಕ್ ದ ಮಜಲ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ವೀಕ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಅದರ್ವೈಸ್ ದ ಅಸ್ಟಲ್ ಕೊಲಿನ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದ ಅಸ್ಟಲ್ ಕೊಲಿನ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಬಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ರಿಸೆಪ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ರಿಸೆಪ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಡ್ಯಾಮೇಜ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಅವರ್ ಓನ್ ಆಟೋ ಆಂಟಿಬಾಡೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಬಾಡಿ ಅವರ್ ಆಟೋ ಆಂಟಿಬಾಡೀಸ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಡ್ಯಾಮೇಜಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ರಿಸೆಪ್ಟರ್ ವೆನ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಡ್ಯಾಮೇಜ್ ಟು ದಿ ರಿಸೆಪ್ಟರ್ ಆರ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ದ ಅಸ್ಟಲ್ ಕೊಲಿನ್ ಡೆಫಿಸಿಯನ್ಸಿ ದ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಸ್ಟಿಮ್ಯುಲೇಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಮಜಲ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಮಜಲ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ವೀಕ್ ವೀಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೀಕ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ this is the concept actually you need to understand in the myasthenia gravis condition okay what happens in the myasthenia gravis condition there is deficiency of the acetylcholine and there is yes the damage of the nicotinic receptors that is present in the nerve and muscle junction and responsible for the capturing the acetylcholine and responsible for the muscle movement if there is any damage to the nicotinic receptors or else de- decrease in the acetylcholine neurochemical which leads to the yes our myasthenia gravis disease the classical picture of the myasthenia gravis disease is the weakness of the muscle weakness of the muscle occurs first where the softest muscle of the body is getting weak the softest muscle of the body which is the softest muscle of the body yes students that is softest muscle of the body is the our yes levator palpebrae the levator palpebrae muscle which is responsible for elevating elevating our upper eyelid that is the softest muscle of the body students first that muscle get weak so due to the weakness of the levator palpebrae our upper eyelid gets down and involuntarily upper eyelid is coming down means that is what we call yes the drooping of the eyelid that is what we call drooping of the eyelid and drooping of the eyelid in the medical terminology drooping of the eyelid in the medical terminology we call that is antosis yes we call that is an ptosis very very important the early sign of myasthenia gravis is ptosis 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 that is our most one more gold standard multiple choice question for your exams okay students the answer for this particular question comes like this the myasthenia gravis which receptors are most commonly damaging that is our yes very beautiful nicotinic receptors okay nicotinic receptors let me discuss let me discuss the receptors here students very important you are getting the cholinergic receptor anticholinergic receptor in short form i will ex- try to explain okay so yes yes students we are having the uh, receptors like just focus on the board receptors in the receptors we are having the yes autonomic nervous system receptors we are having the very importantly sympathetic and parasympathetic in the parasympathetic receptors are also called as cholinergic receptors okay cholinergics and sympathetic receptors are also called anticholinergics anticholinergic receptors anticholinergic receptors students what happens here in the cholinergic receptor we are having the two beautiful other receptors by the name they call as an yes one is nicotinic receptor and another one is muscarinic receptor in the anticholinergic receptor we are having the two more beautiful is yes, the receptor that is the, we call that is an alpha receptor and yes alpha receptor and we call that is an beta receptor very very important students in the cholinergics we are having the nicotinic and muscarinic yes in the nicotinic we are having the two more that is in nicotinic muscarinic and nicotinic neuronal so we write in short form like this capital n small uh, capital m n and capital m in small and yes the capital n and capital m so which receptors actually damage in the myasthenia gravis is that our nicotinic muscarinic receptor okay not muscarinic receptor students don't confuse here in the muscarinic receptors we are having the muscarinic 1 m1 m2 yes m3 m4 and m5 receptors so very 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 important okay so here m4 and m5 present in the central nervous system okay m3 is present in our yes gi tract yes in our pupils 
very important and in our salivary gland okay yes so and this is also present in the central nervous system okay cns and m1 and m2 present m1 is present in the yes again in the cns central nervous system and gi tract only okay and m2 is present in our yes the cardiovascular system specially in the h e a r t heart okay so specially in the heart very important students these are the receptors we are having in the cholinergic receptor that is divided into nicotinic and muscarinic nicotinic further divided into yes the nicotinic muscarinic and nicotinic neuronal this nicotinic neuronal okay n and n receptor this nicotinic neuronal receptor present on the ganglion okay ganglion what is ganglion ganglion is the yes the group of the nerve cell outside the central nervous system is called ganglion and group of the nerve cell inside the nervous system is called as yes, the nuclei very very important basics of the nervous system okay here what happens this nicotinic muscarinic receptor getting damaged here at the yes our very beautiful neuromuscular junction so due to the damage of this particular nicotinic receptors yes due to the damage of this nicotinic receptor yes our very important myasthenic gravis disease occurring so in this one multiple choice question i have told you 10 multiple choice questions this is the specialty of the master nursing classes yes this is the specialty of the master nursing classes students yes let me go for the next question myasthenia gravis occurs due to the deficiency of the yes you can say the answer is in your tip of the tongue yes throw it out yes students throw it out what is the answer yes myasthenia gravis occurs due to the deficiency of the yes or very very beautiful acetylcholine in neuromuscular junction is the yes myasthenia gravis and acetylcholine here focus on the option d acetylcholine deficiency in the brain we call that is an alzheimer's disease students we call that is an alzheimer's disease and deficiency of the gaba leads to the anxiety okay deficiency of the dopamine leads to the yes or what's up dp i have told that is a dopamine deficiency leads to the parkinsonism i told the tricks to remember this one yes our what's up dp dp is the deficiency of the dopamine leads to the parkinsonism yes this is the very easy question let me move for the next one more question so early sign of the myasthenic gravis just now only i have explained that is the subtest muscle of the body our elevator palpebrae elevator palpebrae is getting weak first because of that our eyelids are drooping down eyelids are drooping down so that is what we call in the medical terminology ptosis yes the ptosis is the early sign of the myasthenia gravis students i have explained in detail regarding this one so tremors are the early sign in the h which disease very very important students that is the pill rolling tremors is an early sign of the parkinsonism very important and respiratory distress also occurs in the myasthenia gravis but that is not an early sign when examiner ask the early sign means you have to consider only one sign yes very important that is the one sign so early sign like uh, in the our norset there is one question asked in the early sign students that is question is which is the following the early sign of the yes oxygen deficient means that is the hypoxia so early sign of the hypoxia students the options given like this restlessness and also a cyanosis students early sign of the hypoxia is the restlessness okay but the last sign of the hypoxia is the cyanosis but many students with half concept they have given the answer as in cyanosis so many much losses occurs so that's what that's what you have to understand and study each and every questions carefully and answer carefully that brings and that makes you to stand out of the crowd students our purpose of the in detail study is that i want to stand out of the crowd that is the purpose of the students just understand the question first and try to answer first understand the question then try to answer very important early sign of the myasthenia gravis is the ptosis early sign of the parkinsonism disease is the pill rolling tremors and dyspepsia also occurs distress also occurs but these are not not in early sign okay in the myasthenic gravis so i hope the concept is very much clear for you all let me move for the next question yes which of the following is not a clinical manifestation of the myasthenic gravis examiner is what asking here students read the question carefully 
which of the following is not a clinical manifestation examiner is asking not here yeah. okay focus on the word not except except priority most priority last priority all the above none of the above these gold standard words makes much difference students so a question is like this which of the following is not a clinical manifestation of the myasthenic gravis yes what happening yes i have told in the explaining the pathophysiology of the myasthenic gravis the gold standard is the weakening of the muscle is occurring in the myasthenic gravis yes let me tell see let me draw one diagram beautiful diagram for you all and i will explain okay my diagram is not that much good but i am trying to explain for easy remembering okay for easy remembering okay what happens actually in the myasthenic gravis is like this so here is the person when the eye muscle get weak that is what we call ptosis we will see the ptosis that is the earliest sign of the clinical manifestation okay when the entire facial muscle get weak when the entire facial muscle get weak we see the snarling face we see the snarling face yes i will explain don't worry what is the snarling face i will explain student so see what is the snar snarling face let me explain when we will smile see look at my face look at my face students when we will smile like this our face become vertically increased means it is increasing sorry our face increasing horizontally like this okay but in the patient with myasthenic gravis when the patient of the myasthenic gravis smiles his face will not wide horizontally he wides his face vertically means at the this direction yes this is the face at this direction actually face need to be wide when we smile but in the myasthenic gravis patient the face is widening like this means vertical smile we can say that is an snarling face is also called as an very very beautiful word that is an vertical smile we see the vertical smile so that is what we call the snarling face in the patient with myasthenia gravis yes this is our clinical manifestation and ptosis is also our clinical manifestation we need to put the answer which is not our clinical manifestation students and when we see if eyelid is get weak ptosis occurs and when the facial muscles get weak the snarling face occurs and when the laryngeal muscles get weak weakness of the laryngeal muscle so laryngeal muscle get weak means so we will get sound like this concentrate close your eyes and concentrate <sighs> means the sound is weak and harsh sound is weak and harsh means that particular sound we call as a mushy voice what is that mushy voice or hot potato voice when we put hot potato in our mouth how the sound will come like this students the hot potato the mushy voice means this the classical feature we will see in the yes the myasthenia gravis due to the weakness of the laryngeal major due to the weakness of the laryngeal major very important students and option c is also the very important clinical manifestations of the myasthenia gravis but the option d that is the lahermitis sign where we will see the lahermitis sign yes when we will flex our head like this the current like sensation that runs at the base of the head towards this back of our spine that is what we call the lahermitis sign that particular sign the classical very important sign that we will see in the patient with yes the patient with multiple sclerosis where we will see this in lahermitis sign we will see in the patient with multiple sclerosis that is demyelination of the neurons in the central nervous system okay demyelination of the neurons in the peripheral nervous system we have studied the gullenberry syndrome and demyelination of the nervous system in the central nervous system that is the multiple sclerosis in that one we will study the hermitis sign so this is not in clinical manifestations of the myasthenia gravis hermitis sign we will actually see in the patient with as yes, the multiple sclerosis very very important okay so let me move for the next question i hope the concept concept is clear for you all okay very important 
Yes. All the following are the sign of the myasthenia. Crisis except. Students, in the start of the video, I have told it's very important in the myasthenia gravis to understand the difference, to understand the difference between the cholinergic crisis and myasthenia crisis. Cholinergic crisis and myasthenia crisis. Let me explain that one first. Let me explain first. So, I will explain first the myasthenia crisis. In the story form, you can remember if any kind of question which is arising from the myasthenia crisis means you can put the answer by applying this concept. The answer would be 100 and 200 percent correct. Okay. Let me deal this in the story form. What is the myasthenia crisis? Yes, we are having one beautiful person with the myasthenia gravis. His name is, yes, his name is Akash. Consider imagine Akash. Okay. This Akash he is suffering from the myasthenia gravis. He is taking the medications like, yes, the neostigmine, pyridostigmine like medication he is taking for the treatment of the myasthenia gra uh, gravis. So, when there is distress for him, yes, when there is distress for him, when the Akash will work much, much, much more than his capacity. So, when the Akash get fatigue or when the Akash get infection, what happens in the infection? Infection also is yes, the metabolic rate increases and metabolic rate increases means body activity increases. Body activity increases means what happens? Yes, the acetylcholine demand also increases. In the distress also same students must uh, acetylcholine demands increases. In the fatigue also acetylcholine demand increases. So, already patient is having the deficiency of the acetylcholine. When he get the infection, when we get the distress, when we get the fatigue. So, at that point of the time, students, very importantly, already acetylcholine is deficient and now acetylcholine demand is increased. And I told he is taking the medications, that is a cholinergic medication he is taking for the treatment of the, yes, cholinergic medication he is taking for the treatment of the myasthenia gravis. If in case any distress for the Mr. Akash, any fatigue for the Mr. Akash, any infection for the Mr. Akash or else any disrupt means the compliance the Akash is not maintaining with the medication. What is the medication compliance means he is taking the daily regular scheduled medication. He is maintaining very good compliance with the medication. If he is not taking the medication at the proper time means that is an incompliance with the medication. He discontinued the cholinergic medication. Okay. He discontinued the cholinergic medication. Again, acetylcholine demand increases. Again, acetylcholine demand increases. So, when the acetylcholine demand increases more than the ability of the body, at that point of the time, yes, our entire body is going to weak. Our entire body is going to weak means there is no acetylcholine means I told Acetylcholine is a very, very important parasympathetic, yes, the neurotransmitter. Means there is no acetylcholine, means there is no parasympathetic nervous system activation. So, all the sympathetic, sympathetic nervous system related clinical manifestations will come in the patient. Like the patient will go in the severe hypertension, okay, and patient will go in the, yes, the bradycardia, yes, the bread, sorry, patient will go in the, yes, the severe hypertension. And the patient will go in the tachycardia. Very importantly, students, patient will go in tachycardia. That is the increased heart rate. And patient pupils become completely dilated. If the patient pupils become dilated, yes, very very important. And his all J activity decreases. What happens in the Sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, all the activities of the body increases in the sympathetic nervous system except J system. All activities increases in the sympathetic nervous system and J activity decreases in the sympathetic nervous system. And similarly, what happens in the parasympathetic nervous system? In the parasympathetic nervous system, all body activity decreases and J system activity increases. All body activity decreasing, J system activity increasing means there is a function of the parasympathetic nervous system that is we call the rest and digest phase okay when there is all body activities are increasing ga system activity is decreasing means that is an activated 
is the uh, sympathetic nerve system that is also we call as fight and flight mode okay very important for your exam students so consider all the sympathetic nerve system signs symptom will come in the patient with the myasthenic crisis this is what the concept means what is the concept akash is getting in fact uh, having the myasthenic gravis and he is in the distress and he is in the fatigue and he is in the infection means metabolic activity metabolic need of the body increases along with that acetylcholine demand also increases and he is taking medication and up suddenly he is out of the medication means he is not taking the medication and he is not maintaining the compliance with the medication so if he is not maintaining the compliance with medication and he is having the fatigue means the acetylcholine demand increases acetylcholine demand increases means the body weaks more further more okay the body is weaks further more so that is what we call the cholinergic crisis students this is what happens in the cholinergic crisis sympathetic nerve system activates and parasympathetic activity decreases because there is deficiency of the cholinergic there is a deficiency of the yes very important our acetylcholine neurotransmitter okay so this is the concept here all the following are the sign of the myasthenic crisis except except see consider myasthenic crisis tachycardia occurs hypertension occurs pupils get dilated completely but i told the gi system activity decreases when there is ab abnormal activation of the gi system activity so that is abdominal cramp will occurs when there is decreased gi system activity abdominal cramps will not occurs students this is yes this is the except here okay this is the except so what the examiner asked except or three are the answer except one that is the abdominal cramps abdominal cramps occur in the cholinergic crisis yes the abdominal cramps occur in the cholinergic crisis let me explain cholinergic crisis here it's very important for you to understand see when similar consider as a mr akash okay is a patient of the myasthenia gravis okay is patient of the myasthenia gravis and when he takes the cholinergic medication daily he will take the cholinergic medication okay or there is overdose here due to the in complaints means the patient not taking medications means the myasthenic crisis will occur and cholinergic crisis occurs due to the overdose or the toxicity of the cholinergics so cholinergics overdose occurs at that point of the time so acetylcholine abnormally increased so acetylcholine abnormally increased means very simple our parasympathetic nervous system abnormally increased parasympathetic nervous system abnormally increased means what i told in the parasympathetic nervous system abnormally increased means all gi activity yes all the gi system activity abnormally increases and all the body activities abnormally decreases okay all the body activities abnormally decreases due to abnormal activation of the gi system there is nausea vomiting uncontrolled diarrhea plus very severe abdominal cramps occur students abdominal cramps occurs in patient with the cholinergic crisis okay so in the myasthenic crisis so we are patient is not taking medication there we will increase the dose in the myasthenic crisis but here in the cholinergic crisis yes, in the cholinergic crisis due to the overdose the parasympathetic nervous system is abnormally activated so because of that because of that we will decrease the dose so first priority response here is decrease the dose of the medicine or else first priority and responsibility is withhold withhold the medication in the cholinergic crisis followed by yes followed by the inform the healthcare provider okay and take the necessary action first priority is the withhold the medication in the cholinergic crisis and when we study the myasthenic crisis ask the patient to consult the healthcare provider for the yes increasing the dose so in the myasthenic crisis we will increase the dose in the cholinergic crisis we will decrease the dose or we will withhold the medication very very important to differentiate this both cholinergic crisis and myasthenic crisis we will do we will do one very important clinical test that we will see in this question okay that we will see in this question so which test is done to differentiate between the cholinergic crisis and myasthenic crisis yes which test is done to differentiate between the cholinergic crisis and myasthenic crisis very important students 
so let me read the options first if you know answer means just comment in the try to comment in the comment box okay so if you video are helpful for you means please do like do press the like button it helps me more to approach the many people okay very important here. so so what is the question here is the the test which is you we used to differentiate the coal energy crisis and the myasthenic crisis very important here. so option is the curtain sign yes this sign we will check in patient with the Myasthenia gravis only, but we will not use this sign to differentiate the cholinergic in myasthenic crisis. Either curtain sign now, yes. Myasthenia gravis disease early, not TV, check mark TV clinically, but other than the differentiate not a kagala cholinergic crisis, idea of myasthenic crisis. Ange ice pack test could have now myasthenia gravis alini marti. We are doing the ice pack test also in the myasthenia gravis, but this test also not differentiates between the Cholinergic crisis and myasthenic crisis. And we are having one beautiful test that is a tensilon test or we call that is an adrophonium test. Okay. Tensilon test or adrophonium test. So this is the test which we will use to differentiate between the myasthenic crisis and the cholinergic crisis. Very, very important. Yes, the five star question for our Narset exam students. Five star question for our Narset exam. Let me explain in detail what is actually the tensilon test what actually the tensilon test yes here students we are giving the adrophonium adrophonium injection injection adrophonium okay what is the dose of adrophonium in the tensilon test that is the 10 milligram where we will divide this dose into 2 mg plus 8 mg okay 2 mg plus 8 mg very importantly we will give this one intravenously so iv medication of the adrophonium we will give 10 mg to the patient when we give the adrophonium when we will give the adrophonium adrophonium is then yes the cholinergic medication what is this this is an Cholinergic medication. Yes, very importantly. Cholinergic medication. What cholinergic medications will do? Cholinergic medications which increases the acetylcholine and anticholinergic medications which decreases the acetylcholine. Very, very important. Cholinergic medication increases the acetylcholine and anticholinergic medication decreases the acetylcholine. We are giving is the cholinergic medication to the myasthenic gravis patient to differentiate the yes, the between the Myasthenic crisis and cholinergic crisis. When I will give the adrophonium 10 mg IV to the patient, so that is the acetylcholine increased means his muscle is weakened, muscle is muscle strength, weakened muscle is getting strength on here. Okay, so muscle strength increases means either artha you know, muscle strength increases means the patient is having the deficiency of the acetylcholine. What happens if the patient is having the deficiency of the acetylcholine means that may be due to the if the patient is not taking the medication properly and patient started uh, discontinued the medication. So because of that there is decreased availability of the acetylcholine. Think this is the very one more important point students. In the myasthenia gravid patient, patients should and must take the that cholinergic medication for the lifelong. One thing to one bit, every thing to one bit, no. Patient should take the medication completely live plan. Okay, that one we need to explain for the patient very importantly. So, if when we will give the adrophonium test, uh, adrophonium injection, muscle strength is increasing means so acetylcholine deficiency is there. Acetylcholine deficiency means the choline, myasthenic crisis is there. Okay, myasthenic crisis is there. Very, very important. Very, very important. Okay, when we will give. Adrophonium, that is the cholinergics. So, muscles are further getting weak. Okay. Muscles are further getting weak. Due to the overdose or due to the overdose of the ACH. I told in the as the cholinergic crisis, what happens due to the overdose of the acetylcholine as the muscles become further more weak. 
So when the after giving the adrophonium muscle strength increasing means that is the myasthenic crisis. After giving the adrophonium muscle strength further decreasing means already low muscle strength and further which is decreasing means so that is due to the yes uh, deficiency uh, that is due to the overdose of the acetylcholine that occurs in the cholinergic crisis. Students when the muscles further decreases means so respiratory muscles if involving means the entire weakness of the respiratory muscles which leads to the respiratory arrest. So, so when doing the adrophonium test, the nursing responsibility, the nursing officer should and must keep the atropine sulfate, should and must keep the atropine sulfate at the bedside and keep it ready available while doing the adrophonium test. The examiner will ask which medication you will keep ready as a nursing officer while doing the tensilon test or the atrophinium test means we will keep ready the atrophin sulfate at bedside side and we will inject the atrophinium. If the muscle strength is increasing means that is well and good that is the patient is coming out of the myasthenic crisis. If the muscles getting further weak means if his patient is going the cholinergic crisis due to the increased acetylcholine at that point of the time we need to give the atropine sulfate. Very very important. One more very important questions that is the which medications we need to keep at bedside while treating the patient or oh, sorry while doing the adrophonium test in the myasthenic pitots. Very importantly that is our atropine sulfate. Atropine sulfate is our anticholinergic medication. Okay. This is our anticholinergic. While giving the cholinergic overdose occurs means we will give the anticholinergic. Yes. Anticholinergic medication and atropine sulfate is the all of you know, you know I think the drug of choice for the bradycardia. When heart rate decreased means which medications we will do the drug of choice for bradycardia in adult is yes the atropine sulfate very very important. And so atropine sulfate where we will use yes when there is in cholinergic spizening like argonophosphorus spizening. So when the examiner gives the like uh, we have told previously how the examiner will can ask the question on the OP poisoning means the examiner will give example of a farmer with using the pesticides if he is getting exposed to the pesticides when he using his field so if you after exposing to his pesticides he got yes the he got inhaled that cholinergics the organophosphate poisoning is occurs to the patient due to the OP poisoning yes the increased cholinergics we will see the all the parasympathetic uh, clinical manifestation in the OP poisoning that uh, very importantly pinpoint pupil you will see in the OP poisoning and rolling of the saliva you will see in the OP poisoning because entire parasympathetic activity is going on in the patient with the organophosphate poisoning. So drug of choice to treat the OP poisoning is again atropine and drug of choice to treat the predicardia in adult is again atropine. Very very important students. Two more questions I have to for you for your exams. So hope the Previous concept is clear for you all. Okay. So the test done to differentiate between the cholinergic and myasthenic crisis is the tensilon test. Okay. Hope you understand between the myasthenic crisis and myasthenic crisis and cholinergic crisis. Okay. So this is the, our next question. Which of the following nursing intervention is inappropriate in myasthenic crisis? Okay. While taking care of the patient with the myasthenic crisis, which of the following nursing intervention is inappropriate? Now Patient in myasthenic gravis patient in uh, treat madavaga. Yawa the nursing intervention inappropriate the okay. Very importantly, option A comes like this: keep atropine sulfate ready before doing the tensilon test. Just now I have explained regarding this one. This is a very important nursing responsibility. This is not an inappropriate. This is an appropriate nursing responsibility. Okay, and advise to take medication before. 40 to 60 minutes of the food time. So patient will eat at 9 o'clock means he should take the medication at the 8 o'clock. Why? Why? What is the reason behind this? Anyone please comment in the comment box students. Yes. I am seeing your comment. Comment in the comment box. Why the myasthenia gravis patient should take medication 30 minutes or 1 hour before the taking the food time. Why? Because students in the myasthenic gravis, the core concept is muscle are getting weak. Muscle are getting weak means pharyngeal muscle also weak, laryngeal muscle also weak and muscle of the mastication that is responsible for chewing. 
ಏನಾದ್ರೂ ಬಾಯಲ್ಲಿ ಹಾಕೊಂಡ್ರೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಚೀವ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೊ ಫಾರ್ ಚೀವಿಂಗ್ ದ ಮಜಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟಿಕೇಶನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ವೀಕ್ನೆಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮಜಲ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟಿಕೇಶನ್ ದ ಪೇಷಂಟ್ ಅನೇಬಲ್ ಟು ಚೀವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎನ್ ವೀಕ್ನೆಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಎಸ್ ದ ಲ್ಯಾರಿಂಜಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫ್ಯಾರಿಂಜಲ್ ಮಜಲ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ರಿಸ್ಕ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಆಸ್ಪಿರೇಷನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಗಿವ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಂತ್ ಟು ದ ಮೊದಲ ಆಫ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟಿಕೇಶನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಲ್ಯಾರಿಂಜಿಯಲ್ ಮಜಲ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗಿವ್ ದಿ ಕೋಲಿನಾಜಿಕ್ಸ್ ಮೆಡಿಕೇಶನ್ ಒನ್ ಅವರ್ ಆರ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದಿ ಫುಡ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸೊ ಅನ್ ಹಿ ಟೇಕ್ ದ ಮೆಡಿಕೇಶನ್ ಯಾವಾಗ ಮೆಡಿಕೇಶನ್ ತಗೋತಾರೆ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ಮೆಡಿಕೇಶನ್ ಮಜಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಂತ್ ಇಂಕ್ರೀಸಸ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಮಜಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಮಾಸ್ಟಿಕೇಶನ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಂತ್ ಇಂಕ್ರೀಸಸ್ ಲ್ಯಾರಿಂಜಿಯಲ್ ಫ್ಯಾರಿಂಜಿಯಲ್ ಮಜಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಂತ್ ಇಂಕ್ರೀಸಸ್ ಸೊ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಹಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಈಟ್ ನಾರ್ಮಲಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ರಿಸ್ಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಸ್ಪಿರೇಷನ್ ಡಿಕ್ರೀಸಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ದ ಕೋರ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಬಿಹೈಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಒನ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅಡ್ವೈಸ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ದ ಮೆಡಿಕೇಶನ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಟು ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಫುಡ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಅಪ್ರಾಪ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ನರ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಇಂಟರ್ವೆನ್ಷನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ನಾಟ್ ಎ ಇನ್ ಅಪ್ರಾಪ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಓಕೆ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ನಾಟ್ ಒನ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ ವಿ ಗೋ ಫಾರ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಡ್ವೈಸ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸರ್ಸೈಸ್ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಇನ್ ಅಪ್ರಾಪ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ನರ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಇಂಟರ್ವೆನ್ಷನ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಪೇಷಂಟ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸರ್ಸೈಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮಯಸ್ತನೆ ಗ್ರಾವಿಸ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ಮೆಡಿಕೇಶನ್ ವೆನ್ ದ ಥೆರಪ್ಯೂಟಿಕ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಮೆಡಿಕೇಶನ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪೀಕ್ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ದ ಆಲ್ ಮಜಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಂತ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೇನ್ ಸೊ ಅವಾಗ ನಾವು ವರ್ಕ್ ಮಾಡೋಕ್ಕೆ ಎಕ್ಸರ್ಸೈಸ್ ಮಾಡೋಕ್ಕೆ ಎಜುಕೇಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಪೇಷಂಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪೇಷಂಟ್ ಎಜುಕೇಶನ್ ಈಸ್ ವಿ ನ್ಯೂ ಟು ಎಜುಕೇಟ್ ದ ಪೇಷಂಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಮಾಯಸ್ತನೆ ಗ್ರಾವಿಸ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸರ್ಸೈಸ್ ವೆನ್ ದೆರ್ ಈಸ್ ಪೀಕ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಎಸ್ ವೆನ್ ದೆರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎನ್ ಪೀಕ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಅವರ್ ಕೋಲಿನಜಿಕ್ಸ್ ಮೆಡಿಕೇಶನ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಅವರ್ ಆಲ್ ಮಜಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಂತ್ ಆರ್ ಗೇನ್ ಸೊ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ನರ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಇಂಟರ್ವೆನ್ಷನ್ ಅಡ್ವೈಸ್ ದ ಅಡ್ವೈಸ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸರ್ಸೈಸ್ ಅರ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಇನ್ ಅಪ್ರಾಪ್ರೇಟ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಅಡ್ವೈಸ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸರ್ಸೈಸ್ ದ ಪೇಷಂಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಅಡ್ವೈಸ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸರ್ಸೈಸ್ ದ ಪೇಷಂಟ್ ವೆನ್ ದ ಥೆರಪಟಿಕ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಎಸ್ ದ ಮೆಡಿಕೇಶನ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪೀಕ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಇನ್ ಅಪ್ರಾಪ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಒನ್ ಓಕೆ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಸಿ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ ಡಿ ಕೀಪ್ ಸಕ್ಷನ್ ಮಷಿನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಇಕ್ವಿಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಬೆಡ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಓ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಯಾರಿಟಿ ನರ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸಿಬಿಲಿಟಿ ವಿತ್ ಪೇಷಂಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಮಾಯಸ್ತೀನಿ ಗ್ರಾವಿಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಐ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಟೋಸಿ ಸರ್ಕಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ದಿ ವೀಕ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಎಲೆವೆಟ್ರ್ ಪಾಲ್ಪಬ್ರಿ ಮಜಲ್ ಲ್ಯಾರೆಂಜಲ್ ಫಾರೆಂಜಲ್ ಮಜಲ್ ವೀಕ್ನೆಸ್ ಲೀಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಿ ಐಸ್ ದ ಮುಶ್ಯು ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ದ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಪೊಟೇಟೋ ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ಅಕರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ದ ಡೆಫಿಶಿಯನ್ಸಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಅಸ್ಟಲ್ ಕೊಲಿನ್ ವೀಕ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಮಜಲ್ ಸಕರ್ ಫೇಷಿಯಲ್ ಮಜಲ್ ಸಕರ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಸ್ನಾರ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಫೇಸ್ ದ ವರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಸ್ಮೈಲ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಪೇಷಂಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಮಾಸ್ತೇನೆ ಗ್ರಾವಿಸ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ದ ವೀಕ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಿರೇಟರಿ ಮಜಲ್ಸ
before taking the insulin is the correct answer. Why? Because patient after taking the insulin, when the insulin level is in the peak, means in the maximum potential action, so there the insulin is converting the glucose into the glucagon. Okay, so all our blood glucose level is decreasing due to the insulin. Our time will now exercise more. Insulin is also decreasing the glucose, and when we will exercise, our body muscles also use the glucose. Means the glucose decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. Patient may go into the hypoglycemia. So we will never ever advise the patient with the diabetes to yes, the patient with the diabetes to not to exercise. Okay, we will advise the patient to not to exercise when the insulin is in the peak level. Okay, so we will advise the patient exercise. In the early in the morning in the diabetic patient, but in the myasthenic right patient, we will educate the patient to exercise when the medication level is in the peak. Okay, very important concept you have to keep in your mind. Okay, simple one. Let me move for the next question. Okay, which of the following statement by the patient with the myasthenic gravis indicates need for the further information? This is your endless based question. I have made it short. Yes, answer students. Comment in the comment box first. Which of the following statement by the patient with myasthenia gravis indicates need for the for need for further information? Yeah, one statement patient heard there in the other top statement there. Only you know further information necessary there in the number of the so patient option A comes this patient say patient say like this I will stay away from the crowded space. Very important students. If the patient is staying away from the crowded space, means there is less chance of the infection. There is less chance of the infection, means there is no increase in the metabolism, no acetylcholine de demand increases, means the risk of the myasthenia crisis is decreasing. Yes, this is the very important. So, you will ask the patient to avoid all type of the infection. We will educate the patient to try to be out of the crowd because. When the patient will go in the crowd, means there is risk of the infection. Are there. So, patient will stay saying, I will stay away from the crowd. That is the very important one. And no need for further information. He is telling correct only. Okay. So, again, option B is like this I will use relaxation techniques. Yes, I had told distress and stress are the very important factor which increases the fatigue. Fatigue may increase the acetylcholine demand. Again, acetylcholine demand increasing means the patient may go into the myasthenia crisis. So, he is telling, I will use relaxation means he is not getting fatigue. Very important. That is the way. This is also appropriate. One, the patient is telling. So, no need for further information because he is telling the correct. And option C is telling like this. I will use hot water for bath. Very, very important. So, when the patient will use hot water, his metabolic rate increases. Metabolic rate increases. Metabolic rate increases means his acetylcholine. Yes. Acetylcholine demand also increases. Acetylcholine demand also increases means the patient will go in the myasthenia gravis crisis. Or we can say myasthenia crisis direct. Okay. So, this is the word the patient is telling inappropriately so here we need to inform the patient more and here is the further information is the necessary answer for the question goes like this and so means for regular bathing what he can use means he can use the warm water okay little warm water okay little warm water not in hot water hot water increases the demand of the acetylcholine so that means there is the myasthenic crisis we will educate the patient not to use the hot water and we will educate the patient to yes, the take shower with the cold water or else with the very importantly our uh, warm water. Okay. So, option D is like this. I will take the medication as per the schedule. Yes, he is taking the medication as per the schedule means so there is no risk of the myasthenia crisis. This is also he is telling correct only. So, the where the further information is needed, okay, need for further information is there at the, when the patient state, I will use the hot water. So, at that point of time, we will educate, we will further inform the patient, please use the warm water, don't use the hot water in the, yes, the myasthenia gravis patient, very important students, okay. So, I hope the concept is clear for you. This is the next question.
द ड्रग आफ चॉइस फॉर द मयस्थेनिया ग्रेविस ड्रग आफ चॉइस फॉर द मयस्थेनिया ग्रेविस यस द स्टूडेंट्स टेल मी द आंसर ड्रग आफ चॉइस फॉर द मयस्थेनिया ग्रेविस इज अकॉर्डिंग टू ओल्ड फार्माकोलॉजी बुक्स यू आर हैविंग सो अकॉर्डिंग टू ओल्ड फार्माकोलॉजी बुक्स दिस इज द ओल्ड वन द ड्रग आफ चॉइस फॉर द मयस्थेनिया ग्रेविस इज द न्यू स्टिग्मा बट द न्यू वन अकॉर्डिंग टू न्यू बुक द यस सॉरी ड्रग आफ चॉइस फॉर द Yes, drug of choice for the myasthenia gravis is very importantly our pyridostigmin is the drug of choice for the myasthenia gravis is new one. Okay, new one you have to keep in your mind. Okay, so physiostigmin we will use in patient with Alzheimer's, not in the myasthenia gravis. Why we will not use the physiostigmin? Physiostigmin is a lipid soluble. Okay, this is a lipid soluble. it cross the blood brain barrier when it cross the blood brain barrier which increases the acetylcholine in brain so which increases the acetylcholine in brain so what happens in the alzheimer's disease alzheimer's disease acetylcholine is decreasing in the brain okay decreasing in the brain so physiostigmin is the drug of choice for the alzheimer's disease not for the yes the myasthenia gravis very important for and hydrophonium also we can use we these three medications we will use but the drug of choice is the pyridostigmin adrophonium you can use pyridostigmin you can use and neo neostigmin also you can use in the treatment of the myasthenia gravis and physiostigmin we can't use in the myasthenia gravis you can use that is in the astalzheimer's disease only very important one okay so our next question comes like this the priority in nursing intervention of the myasthenia gravis patient So while taking care of the myasthenia gravis patient, which of the following is the priority nursing intervention? Option A is yes, the very important one. Option A is ineffective airway. Option B is altered nutrition. Option C is affected sense altered sensorium. Option D is anxiety related to this disorder. So this is actually not our priority anxiety. And altered sensorium will not occur in the patient with the myasthenia gravis because this is a disorder of the neuro and muscular junction, not at all. problem in the brain only okay so no any problem in the brain so no any altered sensation sensory memory okay so altered nutritional status may occur but it's a not priority the priority goes like this abc airway breathing circulation so in effect airway is the correct answer so answer for the question is the option a that is the correct answer okay so let me move for the next question that is the last question of the day very very important one antidote of the cholinergic medications cholinergic medications Yes, as cholinergic medications includes the physiostigmin, okay, neostigmin, pyridostigmin, okay, pyridostigmin, neostigmin, very importantly. So these are all the cholinergic medications which are responsible for the increasing the acetylcholine. So when there is overdose of the cholinergic medications, we need to use the yes the anti-cholinergic medication. As such, the which of the following is uh, given option is the anti-cholinergic. When there is an overdose of the yes when there is an overdose of the cholinergic medication, so we need to give the anti-cholinergic medication. We need to give the Anti cholinergic medication. I think this question solved in previous slide only. Yes, answer please. Aspirin is antiplatelet. There is no any. Iska kuch lena dena nahi hai isme. Our question sir. Okay, phenantoin is the anti seizure medications. So here we will study the side effect in the phenantoin as in hirsutism and alopecia together. Gum hyperplasia. Yes, the decrease in the WBC count, decrease in the platelet count. Very importantly and There is increase in the blood glucose level. Side effect of the phenytoin we will see. I will explain in the one more separate class. Okay, for the anti seizure medications, and I have explained in this one my seizure class also. Part one and part two of the seizure. In the part two of the seizure, I have explained regarding this. And sodium alpirate also an anti seizure medication. As a side effect of the sodium alpirate, that is the repeatedly asking question. That is neural tube defect. Neural tube defect is the side effect of the sodium alpirate. So we are having the only one anticholinergic medication in the option that is an atropine sulfate. So while studying the uh, 
tensile on test or hydroponium test i have told so hydroponium you have to keep it at the bedside very important because this is an anticholinergic medication which acts as an antidote for the all the cholinergic medication so we will see the atropine as an antidote for the cholinergic medication so right answer of the question goes to atropine okay so when we will see the antidote of the atropine is the yes, the physiostigmine physiostigmine is the antidote of the atropine and antidote of the physiostigmine is the yes again atropine sulfate very important students i hope the content is very much helpful for you all thank you so much watching the question answer session completely so this is what where the examiner will ask question if you are completely watched this question uh, session means no need to study the mayasthenic rise from anywhere because your entire concept is clear clear if you have any doubt means watch the video again and if you are still having the one doubt means do comment in the comment box definitely students 100% i will respond for your comments so thank you so much for watching the video we are putting some effort students if the video is helpful for you please hit the like button and comment your uh, opinion in the comment box so if any changes you require means we will do with that one okay thank you so much for watching this the beautiful session of the myasthenia gravis we will connect in the next class thank you so much be connected with the master nursing classes